Today I'm going to be reading the Gospel of John, chapter 8, verses 21 to 32. Once more Jesus said to them, I am going away, and you will look for me, and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, Will he kill himself? Is that why he says, Where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be. You will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? they asked. Just what have I been claiming all along? Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable, and what I have heard from him I tell the world. They did not understand what he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as we speak, many put their faith in him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Word of the Lord. Most of us know it, or we played it. This is the game Truth or Dare. It's a game where you have the choice to either you do something that others dare you to, or tell some unknown truth about yourself. This game would be hard for many because when it came down to it, we probably would go for the dare instead because letting others know some truth about yourself is something we don't want to know, to, to do, even though we expect truth from others. And much like the game Truth or Dare, sometimes we're blinded by truth that's in front of us, aren't we? This is the dilemma that the Jews and the religious leaders had when Jesus went to teach in the temple courts that he is the light of the world. This is a bold proclamation and one of seven I am statements that Jesus uh, says. This, his statement is bold because in today's passage, Jesus is even more explicit and tells them that they're going to die from their sins if they don't believe in him. This may sound harsh to many of us, but this is the truth that he's trying to get at, to not only to them, but to us. To take seriously sin and the impacts of living our lives in our old sinful ways. You know, much like physical light is necessary for physical life, the earth would certainly change very rapidly if there were no uh, longer any sunlight. And in the same way, spiritual light is necessary for spiritual life. And this can be a good test of our standing in Christ. The believer will always lean towards spiritual things. He will always lean towards fellowship, prayer, the Word of God. But the unbeliever always does the opposite. Because light exposes his evil, and he hates light. So just like the religious leaders, they had a problem with the truth. The truth that Jesus' disciples received brings with it freedom. And at that point in history, the Jews were under the rule of the Roman government. And even though Rome gave them a huge amount of autonomy, they were keenly aware of the Roman presence around them in the form of soldiers, governors, and appointed kings. So when Jesus said that, that the truth would set them free, however, he was not talking about political freedom. The freedom Jesus offers is a spiritual freedom from the bondage of sin. And he continues with an, with an analogy. He says in verse 35, Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. You know, the people would have understood Jesus to mean that they were not members of God's family. Despite their biological relationship to Abraham, because they were slaves to sin. If they were to become disciples of Jesus, they would know the truth of their condition and the truth about Christ, and that Jesus would set them free. Believers would be free from their bondage and brought into the family of God. We cannot come to a knowledge of Christ 
without first of all understanding the truth of who Christ is and secondly the truth of who we are if we don't know who Christ is we will not value him truly if we don't recognize who we are we will not grasp the greatness of our need but when these tr two truths are grasped simultaneously we can see the glory of God in Christ Jesus and then we can understand that he is the only answer to our enormous need this Lent season may you see the enormous need that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord amen <music>